And so as we move around in our cat cows, our down dogs, even in your down dog, if you'd like to lift a leg, spin the hip open, circle the ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. All of that fun stuff. In through the nose, out through the nose. And so I wanna talk about your wrists while you're doing this. So you can either stay in down dog, you can do cat cows again, or you can come to child's pose, it's up to you. But wrist pain is a big thing in yoga, especially when you're new to yoga, your hands will get stronger. So wrist pain is common. Be, be okay with that. Some of the things that you can do is A, make sure that your fingers are straight forward and they're gently spread, not overly spread. You can also make sure that you're pressing down through the base knuckle of the index finger, this meaty part of your thumb, and the pinky finger knuckle. We all need, we all press here and that is part of this suction cup of the palm, but because we tend to press too much here, that's why our wrist ache and we need to really focus more on that inner arch of the hand, right? And so when I press down onto a mat, I not only spread my fingers out, but then I draw the base of the fingers into the palm and you'll feel the palm almost suction cup, right? So from that space, start to feel wherever you are, the suction cup of your hand. So if you're in down dog, if you're in child's pose, if you're cat cowing, you should be able to feel the spread of the fingers and then the draw in of the root of the finger to the palm. There are no muscles in your fingers. It's all wiring. The muscles are in your palm, so we're trying to activate those muscles. So wherever you are, we're slowly gonna make our way back to a down dog, feeling that suction cup, those four corners of the palm itself. Those of you who are on earth, you'll feel a little different. Maybe you can gather some of that earth into your palm. And then we're gonna to start to make our way towards the top of the mat into a forward fold. Now, I'd like everybody to bend the knees enough that your hands come flat onto the mat. Now, my legs are super short, so, well, that's never been a problem, even if my hamstrings felt tight. But if your hamstrings feel tight and my hands won't go to the earth, you might have to almost do a standing child's pose by bending the knees deeply and laying the chest on the thighs to get those hands down. From this space, I want you to exhale, round your face into your shins. And then on your inhale, straighten everything out as much as you can, flatten your back and roll up onto fingertips as much as you can. Send the tailbone back and the heart forward as you suction the navel to the spine. As you exhale, can you plant those four corners of the hands bowing to the shins again? As you inhale, come up onto your fingertips, extend through the spine, grow long. And then exhale, round the spine, face to shins, hands flat. Inhale, come up onto fingertips, open up the heart, drop the belly almost like you're doing that cow stretch. And then exhale, round the spine, curl over the fronts of the shins like you're doing a cat stretch. Inhale, comes up onto the fingertips, comes into that Betty Boot pose, and exhale, down. Utilizing the next inhale to come all the way up, I'd like you to reach up, press those palms together, see if you can match those four corners that we were talking about. All the tips of the fingertips, all tips of the fingers pressed together. You gaze at the thumbs for four, Three, can you feel the knuckle at the index finger, the base of the thumb, the ring finger even, maybe a little? Two, and one, exhale, hands come to the sides. So you'll notice how like when you start to press your hands, like certain fingers don't wanna press. Let me um, show you this and show the video this. <clears throat> 
to get really good, strong yogic hands. I want everybody to, so that you can get an identity of what's going, you know, identify what's going on on a proprioception basis. Press all base knuckles together and all fingertips together. Can you feel that? Even the thumb and the index finger, right? Everything is squarely mirrored right now. Now, keep the circumference of the palm together and bend the fingers. Don't let any of those parts of the, the palm, any of these knuckles come apart. Do you feel that? Feel strong, right? So this is the hand. Now you might not necessarily look tarantula on your mat by doing that, but can you feel how strong as you press those fingers together Press those knuckles together and bend those fingers. Can you feel that strength? It comes all the way up into your lats and your anterior serratus, right? So this is the deal. That when I'm doing handstands and I'm doing arm balances, it's that grip and those fingers that keep me from flipping over into back bends. This is also the fingers that help pull you forward in your chaturanga when you lower down. All right, does that make sense? All right, so that's the work with the hands today. So when I talk about tarantula fingers, that's what I'm talking about today, okay? So standing tall at your mat, let's go through some sun salutations, start warming up the breath. Oh, yogic breathing, I bet we haven't been doing much of that at all. Not at all, right? Inhale, sweep your arms up, reach up, long side body. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold, melt over your legs, face to shin. Inhale, comes halfway up. You can bring your hands onto your shins for your Betty Boop if you'd like. Hands come down by the heels as the left foot steps back. Low lunge. Knee over front heel as you inhale and float. Hands go down. We're going to our down dog. Hips are high. Get those tarantula fingers going so your arms are strong, but your neck is loose. Inhale, floats to your push-up position. Drop to your knees for the first go round. Now, tarantula fingers. Feel the elbows move back, the heart move forward, all the way down, tops of the feet down, legs together. Roll the shoulder heads back. Lift the heart, lift those tarantula fingers. So still keep them like that and float, right? Feel the shoulder blades squeeze. On your exhale, planting the hands, tucking the toes, pushing up to a plank and back to a down dog on your exhale. With your inhale, allow the left foot to sweep up to the ceiling, stretch it up or sky. We're not in a yoga studio anymore. <laughs> left foot steps through on your exhale to a low lunge. On your inhale, see if you can float nice and strong from that back leg. Hands come down, step forward, fold into your shins, back of the neck, melt. Hands come to shins if you need to, come halfway up. If fingertips are available, please do that. Exhale, forward, fold again. Inhale, ride that breath all the way up. See if you can press the palms so you can feel those four corners. Exhale, swan dive, go right back into it, fold. Hands come to shins, inhale, or fingertips can stay down if available. Hands go back down as right foot steps back to low lunge. Back foot is strong, inhale, floating your low lunge. Hands go down, step back to your down dog, hips are high. Inhale, floats to your plank, push up position, drop to your knees if you'd like. Feel your chest come forward and down. So my chest lands forward of those fingers. Tops of the feet go down. I lift my heart. I lift those hands, but I try to keep them nice and strong as I squeeze everything to the midline. On my exhale, I'm lowering, tucking my toes, firming my thighs. Inhale, pushes to my plank. Exhale, goes to my down dog allowing my right foot to sweep up to the sky, stretch it up. Exhale as right foot steps by right thumb. Inhale, looking forward, floating or setting up that foot. Hands down, step to the top of the mat, fold into the legs. 
hands come to shins if need be or up onto fingertips. Your back is flat, your legs are straight. Exhale, fold back over. Inhale, comes up, really pressing the palms squarely together so you can feel that strength build in your shoulders. Exhale, swan dive forward, fold again. Hands to shins or on fingertips, Betty Boop, halfway lift, belly taunt. Hands down, left foot steps back, low lunge. Inhale, floating low lunge. Exhale, hands down, step back, down dog. Inhale, floats to push up, plank. You can stay on your toes if you'd like, lower all the way down. This time we're coming to King Cobra. Legs together, toes down, heart up, pressing through those hands. Notice I'm not collapsing. All you turtles come out of your shells, right? There you go. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left foot sweeps to the sky. Stretch it up, feel that breeze. Exhale as left foot steps through. Inhale, floating low lunge if it's in your practice. Exhale, hands down, stepping to the top of the mat and folding. Bringing your hands to your shins. Inhale, lifting halfway up, flat back. Exhale, forward folding again. Inhale, coming all the way up, reaching up, stretching up, pressing the palms. Going down one last time in this practice, forward fold. Hands to shins, inhale, lifting halfway. Exhale, hands down, right foot steps back, low lunge. Inhale, floating low lunge. Exhale, hands down, step back to your down dog. Inhale, floating to your plank. Exhale, elbows in, chest forward as you lower. Inhale, Inhale king cobra, legs together, heart lifts. Exhale, lowers. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right foot high. Exhale, right foot step, starting to pick up the breath and the pace. Inhale, floating. Hands down, stepping forward, fold. Take the feet wide, take the elbows into the palms, lacing the thumbs in the inner creases. Start to sway the body left and right. <laughs> So we're going to take it a little slower to start off. It's been a minute since you guys have been in a physical, like where I can look at you and like examine your poses where you're a little more, it's different when you're at home and you know, I'm not looking at you. Y'all are slack. I can still see you. It is zoom. I can not see you, <laughs> but I do the same thing. Unless I have one teacher on, she, I feel like she is looking at me still. All right, so switch the cross of the arms and come to center. You're going to turn your head left and right in a no motion. I'm gonna move this camera back a little bit so we can see my whole head. It's like when my grandmother used to take pictures, she'd always chop everybody's head off, but you wouldn't see that for two weeks because you know, you had to get the film developed. <laughs> she always chop everybody's head off. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I think you can see most of me now. Anyway, um, so from here, guys, as you start to really enjoy your practice this morning, I'm trying to get centered. Go ahead and let the arms drop. Let them hang like zombie arms. And you're gonna roll all the way up. Yes, wonderful. All right, guys, so bring your big toes together. Your heels will have a little space between them because your feet are kind of triangular shaped, right? We have the same kind of suction cup action going on in our feet. So you can feel your big toe, um, the knuckle at the base of the little toe. And then they talk about the inner and outer edges of the heel. I like that. But I also prefer to talk about this front edge of the talus bone or the heel right there between where your arch is smooth and then it starts getting rough, the skin starts getting rough. 
feel that area between the knuckle of the big toe and the little toe, and that will create the same suction cup that your hand has got, all right? From here, let's go ahead and find our chair pose. Sit back, can you feel your, press the palms together so you can feel that squarely, right? And then can you feel your big toe, your pinky toe, and that little space right there before your heel becomes your arch. For four more, feel how it starts to fire up different muscles in your glutes and your outer hips, rather than just your quadriceps screaming in chair. All <laughs> right, it's nice. You have more muscle, use it. Let's sit a little lower. Press the big toe knuckle down, the pinky toe knuckle down, that front edge of the talus bone. Press the knuckles of the hands firmly together. Five, yeah, I know. Three, all that. Um, Hasta banda and Pada banda. Hand and foot lock. Two and one. Exhale forward, fold. Inhale, lifts halfway. Hands are flat. Step or hop back with micro bends in your elbows to lower, right? Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, no straight arms on that one. Exhale, down dog. Now either stay there or come with me. We're gonna pivot the left heel in and down. Right foot steps forward. On your inhale, you come up into warrior one. Press those hands. On your exhale, you lower down, chaturanga. You come to your up dog now, tops of the feet, heart lifting. Exhale, down dog as right heel pivots in. Left foot steps. Inhale, comes up, press those hands. Exhale, lowers down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Now you can stay here in down dog or child's pose. Inhale one. Inhale two, this is a good place to connect with that strength in your hands, to connect with the strength in your feet. Three. Relax the Vulcan death grip muscles around your neck. Four. Now on your next exhale, at the very end of it, you're gonna look between your hands and at the end of that exhale, you're gonna do a light little knees into chest hop. There you go. And then inhale, come into your version of Betty Boop. Either hands on shins or fingertips down. Exhale, forward fold, making sure big toes are together. On your inhale, feel the squareness of your feet as you come into chair, press both hands, press the feet. Exhale, hands at the sides, mountain pose. Big toes are touching in this chair pose. So unless you're pregnant or back injured, we try to get our big toes touching through that part of the practice, all right? Inhale, chair, press palms, press fingers, press feet, press toes, exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway, belly taunt. Exhale, elbows are already bending as you hop back softly. Inhale, comes to your up dog. Exhale, goes to your down dog. You either stay there or come with me. Pivot, left heel in, right foot forward. Inhale, comes up, warrior one, press the hands. Exhale, hands down, chaturanga, lower. Inhale, up dog, tops of feet. Exhale, pivot right heel in. Left foot steps forward, using the inhale to come up, warrior one. Exhale, lower, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, tops of feet. Exhale, down dog, staying here. Inhale, one. <laughs> inhale, two. Your gaze is at your toes or your knees or maybe even your belly button. At the very end of your next exhale, your knees are bending and you're gonna do a little hop, 
knees to chest, feet together. Inhale, right to your belly. Exhale, fold over. Inhale, chair pose. Palms press. Mountain pose, hands at the sides, adding on. Inhale, chair pose, palms press. We're gonna exhale, spin to our right. Left elbow comes over the right knee. Palms are still pressing. So can you feel that suction cup, those four corners in your hands right now? A lot of times we get in these positions and we forget what we're doing with our extremities. So feel the palms firmly pressed together. Feel the elbows move out. One is moving towards the floor. One is moving towards the sky. Three. Can you feel your big toe knuckle, your little toe knuckle, that front edge of the heel? And exhale, fold. No rest for the wicked. Inhale, chair. <laughs> Go ahead and spin the other way. So really firmly press those hands together. What happens is, is this top hand starts to press down into the lower hand, and then that lower elbow allows you to twist the rib cage open more. Inhale one, sit your butt lower. Now get active in your feet. Push the big toes down, the little toes down, the front edge of the heel. Move the left rib cage back more. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step or hop back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Wonderful. Inhale, take your left foot to sky. Exhale as your left foot steps over towards your left thumb. Right heel pivots in and down, but you're standing on train tracks, not a tight rope. So look at your feet. We're coming into warrior one. Inhale comes up. So today in our warrior one, we're gonna press those palms firmly together. We're gonna gaze up at the thumb as we straighten our back leg more. So as you breathe here, if you need to come over onto the concrete at any time, feel free to do so. Bend your front knee, squeeze your big toes towards the center of your mat to bring your back hip forward more. So the more you squeeze inward toward one another with the toes, it'll bring that back hip around more. Stretch the arms up more, reach up, look at those thumbs, press those hands, bend that front knee another half inch, and then exhale, hands down. Down dog or flow one to three times. And so you can do plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. We'll all meet in down dog. Is that candle just blowing y'all out there? Here, let me move that. Wonderful guys. On your next inhale, we're going to take the right leg to the sky, reach it up, stretch it up. Exhale as the right foot steps by right thumb. You're standing on train tracks, not a tight rope. On your inhale, you come up, Virabhadrasana one, palms pressing together. And so as we stand here in this warrior one position, how much can you press the palms together? These back toes are rotated a little more towards the top corner of your mat. So the back toes are not at a nine o'clock or on this pace. Yeah, oh, I got it right. Get your toes forward more towards a 10 o'clock position, 1030 actually. So look at the top left corner of your mat, get your toes forward, reach your back heel down, bend your front knee more, five, press the hands more, three, 
two and one. Hands to the ground, down dog or flow. It's up to you. Wonderful. All right, guys. From here, we're going to inhale, take the left leg up to sky, reach it up. Exhale as the left foot lands by left thumb. So we're still on train tracks, but this time we're gonna leave our back heel lifted. We're gonna root our right hand. We're going to take our left rib cage. So everybody take your left hand onto your left shoulder. So just put your fingertips on your shoulder. Now, take your left rib cage and left elbow and point it up. Now just reach your hand up. Do you feel how like the shoulder and the hand are not pulling you back, but the rib cage is pulling you back? Feel the rib cage twist more. Feel the front knee move into your chest more. The front knee likes to bellow away from the knee. So start to sandwich in on your mat for five. Now take that top arm, reach it right over your ear, stretch longer, turn that top rib cage open more. Keep that lower shoulder out of the ear, plant the index finger and thumb of that mounted hand. And one, hands down, feel the suction cup of your hands as you step back to down dog. Stay there or flow, plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, feeling your hands the whole cycle. And even here, can you feel the big toe knuckle, the little toe knuckle in both of your feet, that space at that talus bone? Inhaling, sweeping that right leg to sky, reach it up, stretch it up. Exhale as right foot lands by right thumb. Your feet are inner hip distance apart or is it as if you were standing at mountain pose at the top of the mat? Left shoulder is out of the ear, right fingertips come onto the front of the shoulder just so that you're rotating with the rib cage, not the shoulder socket itself. Once you're there, stretch the arm up. Try to get the arm so that it's over your face, not over your rib cage. So bring it just above your eyebrow. Inhale, press the index finger and thumb of the left hand firmly down. Pull the front knee into your heart. Open your heart towards your inner thigh. Reach up more, inhale, exhale. Inhale, reach, exhale. Now reach over your head, inhale. Roll your top rib cage open more with your exhale. Inhale, reach long. Exhale, plant the hands, go to down dog or flow. Plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Wonderful. From here, inhale, take the left leg up to sky and just spin the hip open for a second. Circle the ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. Now feel the contact of your hands, feel the four corners. You're gonna bring that left knee all the way up and tap your left tricep and hold. While we're holding here, can you get those tarantula fingers? Yeah. More, more strength, unlock your elbows. There you go, strengthen the hands, unlock your elbows. For five, four, breathe, nobody's breathing. Three, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Step it up. There you go. Now wiggle it dead center of your hands. We're coming into a warrior two. Take a nice long stance. Back heel spins down. The back foot is pointed more towards a three o'clock position this round. Inhale comes up. 
So we have this distance between our feet that's a little longer than our warrior one. And because our hips are open, our back foot is a little more open. Can you still feel the suction cup of the hands? Yes, no? All right, so everybody push down on the air, right? Feel how that fires up the hands more and the back more and relaxes the neck a little? Yes. I would come and let you do the press on my arms thing, but I ain't touching none of y'all right now. <laughs> All right, so let's bend that knee a little more. Yes, get into that uncomfortable space. Reach out, so now feel the feet, feel the hands. Stretch, stretch, stretch for five, four, three, two, Flip the front palm, right hand goes down the back of the right leg. How much can you reach up to the sky? How much can you bend that front knee, push the front foot down for five more? Four, three, two, and one. Utilize that inhale to come back up. Hand, um, you either bring the elbow to the knee or the hand to the earth. The top arm will swing over your head like it did before in that side angle pose. Open up the chest. So feel that right rib cage roll back more. Inhale one. Two. Three. four and five nice guys hands go down step back to a down dog we're gonna go right into the other side so inhale the right leg to sky spin the hip open stretch that hip out some now straighten your standing leg don't let your standing leg go all wonky and then get comfortable in your hands feel that connection as you come forward we're going to bring that right knee up to the tricep get tarantula fingers if you can for five four three two and step and now wiggle that foot it's about fingertips and toe tips. It's a nice long stance, dead center. Back heel spins down. Feel good, come up into your warrior two. Inhale, stretch across the chest, get active in the hands and feet. Exhale, sink a little deeper. Inhale. And exhale. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. How much can you reach to the sky with the right hand? How much can you bend that front knee trying to get that front thigh close to parallel? Are your feet strong? Where's your breath? And use that inhale to come up. Now you're either bringing the forearm across the knee and the arm across the ear, or you're bringing the hand down to the mat, twisting through the left rib cage to open the side body more. Rotate, put the hands down, find your down dog. You can stay there or do plank chaturanga up dog, down dog. You have one to three rounds. We'll all meet in down dog in about the sixth breath.
listening to the sounds of nature in the background. Those of you who are not in Down Dog, find your way there. And then just like we were doing the Sun Sal Bees earlier, you're going to bend your knees and on the last little bit of that exhale, you're gonna do a little knees to chest, feet together, hop. Inhale into your version of Betty Boop, fingertips down or on shins. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, chair pose, press those palms. And then find your mountain pose as you stand nice and tall. Wonderful, guys. We're gonna go into some balance. So those of you guys that are like on earth, make sure you find the most stable place. I can feel this one's like leaning this way. So I'll probably do my balance like this. Um, so the first posture that we're gonna go into is Natarasana or dancer's pose. I'm gonna teach it and then I'm not gonna do it because if I fall out of it, all of y'all fall out of it. So this is how it goes. And I teach it this way because people tend to grab the, hand, the foot wrong. If you grab inside, it ro you'll rotate your shoulder forward. This is not the position you want. You want this open shoulder and open hand position. So when I reach down, I tell people to grab the outside of the right ankle. Then you take the heel of the hand over the toenails to the inside and it will set you up every single time because I've watched experienced yogis grab it wrong over and over again because it's just easier, right? Left arm will go high. Then I am trying to straighten my right leg. I'm trying to straighten it out, right? All right, so from here, reach down, grab the outside of the right ankle, take the hand over the top of the foot to the inside, take the left hand high, Keep the chest and hips centered forward. Stretch the leg straight back. Don't stretch it off the right side of your mat. Stretch it back. Try to straighten the leg without going too far forward. Amy, flip the hand. All right, now take it over the top of the toe. Turn the thumb up. Take it to the top, inside now, all the way in. Nope. Take it to the inside arch like you had it, but you oh. flipped it. No. And release. All right, so you're holding on, you were holding on to the top of the foot. Go ahead and come inside the foot. What happened is, is somewhere along the line, you grabbed like this and it wrote, that's the reason I teach. Grab the outside, come all the way over to the inside. So it's thumbprint and toe print together. All right, guess what? Two sides, not my fault. Take it up with the creator. All right, so right foot down, grab the outside of left ankle. Then take the heel of the hand, the palm, roll it over the toenails to the inside of the foot completely. Right hand goes high. Keep the chest and hips forward and try to straighten the leg into your hand. There you go. So push that leg straighter. There you go. For five, breathing is a good thing. It's part of the practice. <laughs> Have enough distance between you, you can safely breathe, people. <laughs> and release, shake it off, wonderful. All right, <clears throat> so from here, we're gonna go into Eagle Pose or Garudasana. Some of you will be able to wrap your foot. That's fine. It just means your legs are longer than mine. <laughs> it just is, right? So I'm going to demonstrate first. One of the things is, is that you want to cross as high up to the joint as you can. So whatever leg is over the top, that's the arm that's on the bottom. So I will stand on left foot first. I'm mirror imaging for the first time. Zoom does it for me usually, <laughs> right? So... So standing on the left foot, that means that my right arm is gonna come under. I'm gonna vine at the forearms. I'm gonna curtsy, and then I'm going to take my right leg over and try to vine and get the foot around. Notice that I am squeezing the upper inner thighs and 
sitting back, feeling the four corners of my feet. All right, let me move out of your line of vision. So right leg over, right arm under. Inhale. Straighten your fingers out, exhale. Squeeze your inner thighs, sit lower, inhale. Exhale, can you feel the big toe, the little toe, the front edge of the heel? Now, without putting the right foot down, stand up and bring that right knee up to your elbows as much as you can. Yep, try to touch the elbows without rounding forward. There you go. For five, four, hands onto hips, three, straighten the right leg out and point through the toes and spread them at the same time without leaning back. And then come into tree pose. So foot will either come to inner thigh or inner calf. It's up to you. Smile. Those of you on all that pine bark over there, just enjoy these balanced postures. It's not bad. They're kind of conforming. <laughs> there you go. Later today, when we're in teacher training, I'm going to take you guys out on the dock and just let you feel balance pose on a dock for a day, for a moment. Go ahead and release. It's ridiculous. Like, you think that dock's not moving too much, but oh, honey, try to, try to just stand in tree pose on that dock for a little bit. It's fun. We will. If you're in training today. All right, so guess what, two sides? Not my fault. So bring big toes together. We're gonna get that little curtsy on this time. Left arm comes under, and then left leg goes over, right? So squeeze your upper inner thighs. Squeeze your upper inner arms. Sit back, bending that standing knee more. Yeah, so curtsy. There's your breath. Now, without stepping that foot down, bring that left knee up to your elbows and stand up super tall. So push the ground away. There you go. Now bring your hands to your hips. Now straighten that leg out. Gas pedal race car. And then come into your version of tree. shake all that off wonderful all right so um because we're on the earth uh in concrete and stuff some of you might need to uh pull your mat back just a little bit we're gonna do some camel poses so put your knees down onto that uh surface if you're if you're fine without doubling up your mat you're fine knees are if you look you know, my knees aren't spread. My my legs are still mountain pose, right? My toes are tucked under. We're gonna actually use this for some core work today too. So I want you to bring your hands in prayer and hope I get over this real soon, right? So, so notice when I do my hands in prayer, look how level my elbows are. I'm really, my thumbs are at that low edge of the heart. 
And this is what you're looking for in your twists too. This is gonna give you your, your most strength. Now press those hands together. Those of you who are like my age will remember the you must, you must improve your bus little egg thing that they used to send you. That's what you're doing. <laughs> People in the park are gonna just love these yoga classes, aren't they? Anyway, so my elbows are wide and I'm just simply gonna turn and look back at my left heel and then come up center. But look, I'm kind of like leaning back and looking, like I'm trying to look at the sole of my foot, right? And leaning back and looking. Press those palms, don't you lose those palms. Press and look, little arc. Notice I'm keeping my hips forward. So shoot the pelvis forward, pull the shoulder back, and up, and back, and up. Now, if you wanna come with me, go back and take the hand and touch the foot and come up. Go back, take the left hand, touch the foot and come up for five and up and five on the other side. Thought I was gonna go down to four, didn't you? That would have made it uneven. Four, so really keep the hips forward. So you're doing a camel right? You should feel your abs holding you up as you're arcing back to touch that foot, right? What are we on? Three, something like that. Sounds good. Two, your legs should be talking. Lower abs should be talking. Go back and up, back, and up, last one each side. Go back and up, back and up. Now this time, if you can, either hands onto back, full camel, or hands onto heels, full camel. Inhale one. You can drop your head back if your heart is up to the trees. Inhale comes up, hands down. We're going straight into a down dog. Come over onto your um, plank and lower all the way down. Okay. So from here, we're going into some Supermans. So take your arms forward, alternating Supermans actually. So legs are not wide, they're hip distance apart and hands are shoulder distance apart. We're gonna press the left hand and the right foot down. We're gonna lift the right hand and the left foot. Yeah, this is gonna be like rubbing your head and patting your belly at the same time, All right? Now switch and switch. Switch, filling the four corners of your hand Filling those points in your feet, switch, switch, keep both hips down, switch, switch. Notice how your hip wants to come up when you lift, switch. You're trying to switch in midair, switch, 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 switch. Last one, switch. And now both come up and hold. Now take those hands back, the legs open, the heart open, rotate the palms forward, lift the heart more, squeeze those shoulder blades, lift higher, bend the knees. See if you can grab a hold of the ankles, keep the toes together, try to straighten the legs. Spread the toes, bow pose. Five, four, three, Two, now slowly release the legs. Take those arms back out. Bring those arms forward, the legs together. Press the palms and lower. Bring the hands under the head. Rotate the head to the right. Switch. 
switch whatever hand is on bottom to top and rotate your head the other way. Wonderful. Go ahead and push up to all fours, cat-cow. Wonderful. We are going to take the left knee, slide it up to the outer edge of the left wrist pivoting the left leg um, shin underneath us in a figure four, and then slide back through the right leg. So we're coming into half pigeon. Um, the knee is still on the mat. It should be pretty much underneath your armpit. Go ahead and come down onto your forearms if you'd like. <laughs> your breath start to slow let it become more expansive feel the inhale intensify the stretch rather than moving deeper into it and then feel the exhale allow your body to soften so the inhale intensifies the stretch there's a gentle pause now and then when the intensity subsides, the exhale comes. And just a little deeper, a little more relaxed. then go ahead and come up and then do the other side. And so the right knee comes up by right wrist. And so it should be just like peeking out just, just outside of your rib cage. Like I've got maybe two or three inches of my thigh and my knee sticking out where my armpit is. Right. I'm trying to square my hips towards the earth. And so there's a tendency for like this left hip to be rolling back and you to sit completely on your right hip. What I'd like to see is that right hip to come up so you're a little more centered. Um, so you can feel your second and third toe. You can feel the center of your shin, the top of your center of your left knee and the front of your left hip down towards the earth.
wonderful. Go ahead and make your way back to a down dog. Wiggle it out. Wonderful. Go ahead and come down. We're going to sit at a straddle. And so if you'd like to sit where your majority of your legs and body are on mat. Um, I am running a little past time. So if anybody has any pressing parties or appointments to get to. All right. So my toes are spread and to the sky. If this is intense on you because we don't have lots of props and just sitting up like this is like your favorite thing, Emma, right? <laughs> right? Go ahead and take the left leg in and that'll allow you to sit up better. So those of you who are in teacher training, if you're wanting to do something, you put people on the floor and they're just like, and you don't have props and stuff, you know, because I first started teaching in gyms. They didn't have any props and you know, so, you, so do it asymmetrical pose. It'll be more applicable to people. It'll take that intensity because why? We're not just stretching the legs, we're actually stretching the pelvic floor. So we're stretching the connection between the legs. So if you take one of the legs out of the equation, it doesn't stretch completely across the pelvic floor in the same way, but it makes it more available to people in the middle of a park without as many props. <laughs> All right. So we're going to rotate towards our right leg and we're going to take our body over our right leg. If we're looking to see what we're going to do more than anything in this posture is we're going to try to get the chest over the right leg, but we're also going to take the left arm, try to reach it around. So the left arm is relaxing and the right hand is grabbing as much as possible. Why? Because I'm trying to get into this erector space, this, um, this place of attachment of glutes and low back muscles as I go over in this twist, yes? And so as you go over here, keep both sit bones rooted. Notice as I go over, if I press through my right leg, I'm pressing that right leg down it will root my left sit bone and intensify the stretch through that left rib cage as well. Relax the face, it ain't gonna hold that pose. That's what I miss most from being in front of you guys is all getting to see all y'all's facial reactions during yoga. So go ahead and take another deep breath there in through the nose, out through the nose. That low power mode. On inhale, you're gonna come up. We're gonna go center and forward just for a few breaths. So keep your knee like that is. You don't have to go straddle just yet. Just go center and forward. Those of you who feel really rounded in your low back, see if you can lift your tailbone up and push your pubic bone down. And then come up. If you did one-legged on one side, you will do asymmetrical on the other side. Otherwise, we're rotating our chest over our left leg, really reaching more, stretching more with this whole right side of the rib cage and the low back. your inhale to come up and we'll come a little center again okay. 
that was super yummy. Go ahead and come up, guys. We're gonna go onto our back. Any spinal twist that you wanna do, um, I'll let you decide because you know some of you are trying to contain yourself a little more on your mat than others. So pick a spinal twist that feels good, something gentle, and then we're laying down into Shavasana, into meditation. Yay, meditating outside is always so wonderful. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. you've wiggled out all your stuff. Go ahead and stretch out. If you need to cover your eyes, feel free to do so. It's something good that our face masks are for. <laughs> Cover your eyes, too. They work. It's a duality. It's the duality of it all. <laughs> you market that. I know. I want to do ones. I want to airbrush like faces on to face masks, like airbrush your lips and stuff on there, so that it just look. I, yeah, I know. I, read I know something like you need four masks hanging by the door. One is like a smile. One is a pissed off. One is a Ooh. <laughs> pick your mood for the day. Pick your mood. It's like <laughs> emojis for the face. I actually thought about making a bunch of bougie masks because you know we all go out in the desert, so we all have these really bougie face masks that I mean I have like this Arabian Nights one with these like rhinestones and everything I think we will just bring burning to the, the community so as you lay back here just for a moment I know that we've all got a good eight feet in between us but just identify the people that have been practicing in your vicinity today. I think that's one of the biggest things that we miss is we just miss being around others' energies. You can feel people around you, right? And so maybe soak up a little of that love, a little of that energy right now. Everybody coming out here safely, practicing with one another. Enjoying all the sounds of the birds and nature around us. I want you to take time to wish everybody in your area just a bit of peace, a glimpse of gratitude. 
have a nice energetic flow to their existence today. And as you send that out, also receive as others are sending to you at the same, at the same time. And then I'd like you to spread your fingers and spread your toes. Having a little gratitude to be out here on this beautiful day. And those of you who want to roll over onto your side. I want you to roll up with your eyes closed in a seated position. Kind of center in, feel that space of peace and, and calm and that sense of everything's already okay right now in this moment. And your next inhale, reach your arms up. And then on your exhale, let your hands fall in prayer in front of your heart. Thank you for joining me for practice today. Let your minds be open, your hearts full. Namaste.